Hi, my name is Dr. Nikita Visniak, and you might know me from the multiple books that I've authored, online videos, our website prohealthsys.com, or the 20 plus years of cadaver dissection and clinical practice that I've been involved with. Today's topic will be the piriformis muscle and how it moves and the orientation for stretching application in the cadaver lab. Take our basic range of motion to start with, with internal rotation of the hip. So you can see how all the short lateral rotators stretch out as we do internal rotation. Why do I like this model so much? Because it shows you with the stretching bandage, when the words change, you can see how much it's being stretched. So we go piriformis, superior gemellus, obturator internus and externus would be there as well. Inferior gemellus, quadratus femoris. So if we just do internal rotation in our anatomical position, it's easy to see how most of the stretch is through the quadratus femoris muscle. Now, most of us are taught a standard stretch where we bring our leg up and then do full external rotation with the hip past 90 degrees as a way to stretch piriformis. So let's look at the biomechanics of that. The origins and insertions have been marked clearly on this so we can see exactly how they move. So if I do the hip flexion, number one, what gets stretched the most? You can see stretching, 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 stretching. Quadratus femoris is stretched the most. And in fact, I would challenge you to even realize that even gluteus medius and gluteus minimus would also be stretched substantially in this position. Even more so when we take the leg and we externally rotate it, as we spin out, 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 we get next to no piriformis stretch until we get up to the very end range of motion, right up into here, and that's when piriformis starts to get a little bit longer, or when I go into full adduction across the front of the hip. But otherwise, most textbooks, most anatomy instructors, most personal trainers have it wrong. It is not a stretch of piriformis when in fact it is more of a stretch of quadratus femoris, and the gluteal muscles, gluteus medius and minimus over top. Right, we'll add a couple more things to this model. We're going to put up a video right here. The simple fact is most doctors, therapists, trainers don't even know the size of a piriformis in relation to the sciatic nerve. So if you look at this video right here, number one, you can see what do you have to get to to palpate it. So we start with gluteus maximus, which has been cut away from its origination point and peel that back. And what do you see? A large thick muscle over top. And then getting deep to that, we can also see numerous blood vessels. So when most people are talking about piriformis and piriformis syndrome and compression of the sciatic nerve, you need to realize that your sciatic nerve is about the size of your thumb and it's usually about the same size as most patients piriformis. Most doctors and therapists have no clue on this and that's clearly shown in this dissection. So hopefully you found this useful. I thank you very much for our time. If you'd like to read about this and more of our topics, please visit our website or subscribe to our YouTube channel and go ahead and review our textbooks that are used by hundreds of thousands of practitioners, doctors, and therapists around the world. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again soon.